Hey guys, welcome to the channel. On this video, I'm gonna show you my step-by-step -step guide to how I plan and set goals for my week. We're gonna go through what goals you need to set, how to map your week for success. We're gonna look at what software you can use, and we're also gonna look at the best questions you can ask yourself when you review your week. So let's jump into the video. needed a coffee. So the reason why I set this as my first video is I really believe there's a big connection between focus, energy, and your goals. A lot of people message me about oh, how do you keep motivation, how do you keep inspired. It really just all stems from setting goals, really. That's it. You know, I'm a parent. I've got two kids, obviously, because I just said I'm a parent. I've got an agency. I'm building my personal brand. I train a lot. I've got a lot of things going on. But when I started to focus on my goals, things really started to happen for me. I started to get a lot of momentum in life, in career, in my job, in my agency. Everything started to come together and it was this relentless investment in my own time to look at my goals and plan them around my week. So the first thing you're gonna do and what we're gonna talk about is your actual goals. What are your goals? I think the biggest mistake that people make when it comes to goals is they start to compare or they start to they do two things, they either compare what other people have or they play the what if game, which basically looks like you saying, oh, what if I can't do this or what if I can't do that? And it basically puts limitations on your goals, okay? So the three areas that I want you to focus on to begin with and what I do every single week is a financial goal, a health goal and an emotional goal. So let's start with financial goal. Now the financial goal is super important, I'll tell you why. Before I started setting financial goals, I used to just focus on client delivery. I was in maintenance mode, I was getting by. I was getting by in life. I was just going from one task to the next, a massive to-do list, and it was just purely maintenance. I was lacking fulfillment and I was lacking motivation. As soon as you set a financial goal, you start to then figure, think about how you can make that money. We all need money in life. There's Some people are ashamed to talk about money. We all need money. Like there's certain things that you want to achieve in your life, whether it's experiences, whether it's material things, whether it's treating family to friends to, to things, doesn't matter, we all need money. So having a financial goal gets your brain working in a way and you start seeing opportunities for you to make money throughout the week. Okay, you go into problem solving mode. So make sure one of the goals is a financial target for the week. The next one is an emotional goal. Now, emotional is quite broad for me, but emotional goals to me look like things like spending time with the family. What am I gonna do with my kids? What am I gonna do with my missus? Is it a date night? It could even be just me spending time investing in personal development, it might be meditation. It's things that ground you, it's things that take you away from the stress of the week or the overwhelm and ground you. Always make sure that you have a goal in your week that grounds you and brings you back to center and recharges you so that you can go again. People are always looking for, and me, I used to look for the, the easy routes, the easy way around things, but there is no easy way. It's always going to be a challenge if you're going to be striving and pushing for more. So if that's the case, you need things like the emotional goals to ground you, centre you so that you can refuel and go again. And the last goal is a health goal or fitness, whatever you want to do. I used to play quite high level sports, so fitness is really a paramount. It's kind of like a foundation to me as a person. It energizes me, it keeps me focused. The opposite of doing that might be getting up late, going to bed late, lacking in energy, eating crap, losing concentration because of all of the things you're doing. So energy is really important thing. To stay energized, you should be training, you should be looking after yourself, you should be staying healthy. So make sure that there is a physical goal in your week. So you've got your three goals down. Now you've got to start to connect with them. I know it sounds really weird, but how do you connect with these goals? So there's a few questions that I ask myself every single week before I go into it that connect me emotionally with those goals. Write these down. How will your business or your life change once you've achieved the goal? What you're doing here is, you've heard the saying, a picture paints a thousand words. You're visualizing what it would look like if you achieved that goal or when you achieved, achieved that goal. 
So for example, for me at the moment, one of my goals, financial goals is let's say 5,000 pounds in the week. I know the change that for me and where that's going is towards a new house, I'm decorating, I'm getting my kitchen done, it's gonna cost a fortune. But I'm emotionally connected with that vision of me coming out of my office, walking into my beautiful kitchen, my kids are there doing their homework around the school, my missus is in there helping them, and I can visually see this, I can emotionally connect with it. It gets me so excited to have that vision in my mind. I want you to do the same. So just write down what it would actually feel like once, look and feel after you've achieved that goal. Next step is your plan, okay? And this isn't a four page document, but ask yourself this question. What specific action steps or next steps do you need to make to achieve your goal? And what you wanna do here is you just wanna bullet list things that you know you can go and do to build momentum. What are the very simple things that you need to go and do to get momentum, okay? So that might be, Look at it like this, if you're driving in a car and it's pitch black and you're driving through the forest and you can't see anything at all and you turn on your flashlights or your headlights, you can only see maybe what, five feet in front of you? That's what you put in these lists, is there's just the next easy steps. What you wanna do is when you close your laptop or wherever you write your goals, you wanna be able to instantly remember the main things that you have to go and do. So just bullet point them, really specific, really easy to digest so that you know your next steps. So the last question is complete gold. What might prevent or stop you from achieving your goals and how will you get around it? This is all about prepare preparation, okay? What you're doing here is that you're already bringing to the surface the things that you know might stop you or hinder you from achieving the goal, no matter how big or small, whether they're external factors or they're internal factors. Write down every single thing that you feel might come up that might prevent you from achieving your goal. And then also just add to it how you're gonna get around it. So let's talk about lack of motivation. Okay, well, I'm, I'm not motivated to get up. Okay, so how can I get, instantly your brain will go into the how. Okay, so how can I get around that? Well, I'm gonna set um, two alarms. I'm gonna make sure that all my clothes are ready but next to my bed. Find an accountability partner that's gonna, I'm gonna message first thing up whilst I'm up. And instantly you start coming up with these solutions to solve the problem or the hurdle that might come up in your week. And the last question you wanna ask yourself when you're going into your week is what support education or coaching do you need basically people do you need to help you achieve this goal so i don't know let's say if you need to improve your running and you want to run a 5k three times a week is there someone that you know that runs and they're good and you can go running with them youtube channel that you can go and watch and it's going to tell you how to get a 5k under a certain amount of time is there if it's to lose weight is there any videos that you can go and watch is there any people that you know just list everything that you know you need to people you need to connect with or things you need to do to educate yourself on achieving that goal and basically what you want to do here is you, you want to build your network, right? This is you investing your, in your network and your knowledge to make sure that you have the, the right tools, the right skills to go ahead and achieve everything you want on that list. After you've got all of your goals, you're fully equipped, you know what might come up and the hurdles, you're emotionally connected to them, now you find accountability. Okay, accountability was a big game changer for me. I have a business coach that I work with, but before that I would work with, I would connect with friends that were on the same mindset of me. I would commit to my goals to them. I would share my goals on social media. I would tell people what I was gonna go and achieve. It's a level of burning your bridges. I call it burning your bridges, sounds really negative, but I like putting myself in a corner so that I have to come out fighting. So I will burn as many bridges to myself to make sure that that goal happens and I commit. Accountability is all about committing, it's all about eradicating procrastination. So if you have a goal on this list and you believe you can do it, tell someone, commit to someone, uh, get accountability, find a coach, do it on social media, whatever you feel works for you, but finding accountability is the best thing that you can do next. So when it comes down to the map, mapping out your week, this is what my week used to look like. I would sit down on a Monday morning and I'd write down all the client projects that we're working on and, and that was the first thing that I would do. Complete opposite now. 
The first thing I do now is I look at my week and I map my health goals. I map the things that are gonna energize me first and I make sure that they are the paramount. Nothing else stops me from doing those goals. Next is my emotional goals. So typically that's gonna be spending time with my family, investing time with my kids, doing things that recharge and fuel me. And then the third thing is the money. I look at what opportunities and I map out what opportunities, sales calls, ways that I can invest to get some money coming back into me to hit my target. Last and finally, I look at clients. I look at what client projects we've got and that doesn't mean that I'm not invested in my clients doing well. I just know they don't get the best version of me if I am not fulfilled, motivated and focused. So I have to make sure all of these goals come way, way before I start working on any client projects. And I just do the same, right? Make sure you do the same. Put your main goals first and then start looking on the maintenance stuff after. So let's talk about the review. So you've gone through your week. You might have hit your goals, you might have not. That is actually irrelevant. That is the irrelevant part. People think that the goal hitting is the, the main thing. No, it's not. It's the growth and the understanding and the self-awareness of why you may not have hit your goals and why you did, that will be the game changer. So the review is equally as important as the goal setting. And the way you do this, and this, let's just talk about me, right? How I do it. I wake up at 5.30 every Sunday and I spend an hour of my day reviewing my goals. Now, the reason it's 5.30 is only because I like to get up before my kids wake up. That's the only reason. There's no ego, it's not the 5 a.m. club. I don't care about any of that. It's purely just so that I can invest that time, understand how my week went, and then plan the next week and I do that before the kids get up. So, five o'clock, 10 o'clock, it doesn't matter, but Sunday morning, typically you wanna wake up and you wanna spend some time, lock yourself away, no distractions, no phone, and you're gonna ask yourself these questions. Did you achieve your goals for the week? Yes or no? Have a no BS approach to yourself. Be able to call yourself out on your rubbish that you say to yourself, but also be able to congratulate yourself on things that you do well. This is why we limit it to just yes or no. Typically your brain will go, oh no, but, but I've done this. No. Did you achieve your goal? Yes or no? Great. Next question. If you didn't achieve your goal, what stopped you? This is your opportunity for each goal to list down areas or the things that happened in the week that stopped you from achieving your goals. Okay, be specific, be honest, be real with yourself. Don't hold back. You have to list it down because these are the lessons that are gonna propel you for the next week. So the last question in your review is, what people, education or support or coaching do you need around you to go on and achieve what you want next week? And the reason why you ask yourself this question is again, understand where you're lacking. What areas did you lack in this week? Who do you need to surround yourself with next week? What people can help you achieve the goals that you set out? Regardless of whether you think it or not, most of us need support. We go through all of our life, our childhood, with coaches, um, mentors, teachers, people providing us knowledge and sharing and sharing with us. Why is it when we get to an adult, we feel that you know we've got it all sussed out? It's not the case. Typically, you need a network of people around you. It doesn't make you weak, doesn't make you vulnerable, but typically you will need people that you can bounce off of and that can help you get to the next stage, right, of whatever growth it is. This is an opportunity to list down the people that you need around you to help you achieve next week. And finally, I use a really cool software called Notion. Okay, Notion is just a, an amazing database where you can create dashboards and you can store all of the information like your weekly plans, your reviews, you can map out your weekly goals, you can connect it to your calendar. From one view, I literally have a life dashboard which has my vision board on there and everything that I need to, to make sure that I set these goals and achieve them. I'm gonna add, the, add my template in the description. So go ahead, go and use, use Notion and download it. But saying that, you, this could just be a calendar. This could just be a notepad. This could be in your phone. Just make sure that you put these goals in places that you check regular. I would say you need to be checking this the night before you wake up every day and on the morning of that day, just so it's in the, the forefront of your mind. When I was first creating the habit, I would set alarms to go and check my goals, just so it's continuously on my in my mind. That's how I set my goals for the week and I, I look to smash my week every week. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. The lesson is in how you learn 
from the good and the bad and then making sure you invest the time to go again the next week. I hope you like this video. Our next video, I'm gonna be talking about content clusters and how you can come up with content ideas. But if you did like it, hit subscribe, hit like, hit a comment up, just give me some feedback and I'll see you next time around.